Hi, my love, Sheree Miletti, girl from Runaway, where we have culture, conversation, and community. And in today's video, I'm coming to you all with a little something different, but that's how we're doing things. First of all, just by the title, I know a few of us are going to be like, um, Jere, where, where are you going with this? And I get it. That's fine, sis. But the purpose of this conversation is to be thought provoking. Understand that I'm well aware that our community is divided enough and I'm not making this video to be, um triggering or furthermore divisive i simply want to shed light and start a conversation now for a second close your eyes right and imagine you caught a flat tire on like a backcountry road not on a highway where there's lights and traffic and potential help i mean like one of those backcountry roads with no lights okay it might be a little swampy okay the air is thick this flies and bugs and shit remember that like newscaster okay the fuck is that Shit! I'm dying in this fucking country ass fucked up town. You're already mad at yourself because your baby daddy, your boyfriend, your husband, your daddy done told you that your tires were bald. You know, we tend not to listen to things like that. So now you already even more upset at yourself. Then a car starts to pull up and you know it's approaching because it's really the only main source of light and you're hopeful like maybe they can help me change a tire. And when the car pulls up, there's a group of black men, four to be exact. You're alone now. Four black men, strangers, offer to help. They can't change the tires, but they say, come on, get in the car and we'll take you to your destination to get you help. Okay, now same scenario, but this time around, there's a group of black gay men who pull up and they say, you know what? I can't really help you change this tire, but hop in a car and I can get you to your destination. Now, which car would you most likely feel safest in? Think about your experiences as a black woman. As a woman, okay? What car are you getting in? Car A or car B? Now, without me asking you to drop down in the comments and let me know which car you decide to get into, but definitely do that because I wanna know what y'all thinking. I can assume that the vast majority of us are gonna choose car B, which is what led me to this idea of the video in the first place. Granted, we are several days into the Tory Lanez trial, which is somehow turning into um, a trial against Megan, which, you know, go figure. And I have to admit, I was a little bit astonished by the amount of support that Tory Lanez still has. Even if they're not outright supporting him directly, I mean, like the flip side of that is the hate and dissent that they have for Megan, which some of them are women, right? The victim. And it's just really kind of like sickening. And I want to add that the only real voices that we're hearing on platforms like this one and TikTok and Instagram are not coming from heterosexual black men. They're coming from, you know, queer black men, period. They make up the majority of support coming from men in support of Megan Thee Stallion is the gay community. Like why are the heterosexual men so quiet on this one? I just don't get it. They're so quick to condemn homosexuality and our disillusion that they are somehow this superior man um to you know a homosexual but somehow still managed to not speak out against the abuse and the injustices that black women face and oftentimes you know at the hand of another black man right i mean like hello because we could argue that it's too hard for them to come up against a whole oppressive society okay cough cough people who lack melanin, right? Because truth be told, they be needing our help navigating those terrains half the time. But what about when one of the injustices comes from them? Ones who are a part of the community. It's silence. It's silence. Or it becomes a conversation about her sexuality or her sex sexual choices and preferences versus men, black men holding other black men accountable. And let's just take a step back from like popular culture and just look at our everyday lives. I have witnessed so many black women experience trauma and hurt, violence, all of these type of things at the hands of another black man. It's scary, honestly. It's scary when you think about it. From degrading music lyrics, from egos, from, you know, Kevin Samuels, black men seem to get off on degrading, denouncing, um, disregarding black women. All the while he's elevating and fetishizing, you know, non-black women, okay? Praising them and coming to their aid and oh this and oh that. Whereas the only real allies when we have from the black man, as far as in our community, tends to come from black homosexual men. Which in my opinion is more masculine. Right? But honestly, listen, the men will turn a blind eye when a black man is disrespecting another 
black woman but then when a situation happens when in this system they expect for us to come to their aid and rally up against them all oh, the black men you know case in point that man the other the, a couple of weeks ago a couple of months ago when his white girlfriend you know did his life and it was like oh you know he she can't get away with this and and otherwise you know he wouldn't have done it for us and i also think it's fair to mention the interpersonal relationships between black women and black women because obviously black gay men are not attracted to women right typically the interests aren't the same so as women it takes down the level of fear of being you know manipulated targeted or even assaulted there is less fear because that sexual aspect isn't there. Summer Walker was just in the headlines because she said she wanted to have a white gay male as her personal assistant. And she explained like, I don't wanna have to have anyone hitting on me or thinking, you know, having ulterior motives. And although y'all drag Summer, I feel like she made a valid point, right? I, I just feel like she made it. Drop down in the comments if y'all understood what the girl was trying to say. Now granted, she could have done it differently, whatever, what have you, but I, I dug it. And I wanna just backtrack a little bit because I don't want this to come off as thinking that gay black men um, can't sexually assault people, can't sexually assault the same or whatever, because that's not what it is. That is not the case. That is not what I'm saying, because you know, uh, is it, is it, is it, you know what I mean? It's, if he's that type of person, doesn't matter his sexual orientation, period. I think it's common knowledge to have black men who aren't gay to have less control self-control over his sexual desires, his sexual prowess, and his need to dominate and control women. There is absolutely no accountability that takes place between men when it comes to those things. In fact, I think that there's this invisible measuring stick to see who's the most toxic, who's the most masculine, who's the most player, you know what I mean? I really feel like based on those things is how they decide and determine each other's value as black men, which is very weird, very odd. Not funny, haha, -ha, funny, weird. Whereas black queer men don't get brownie points and kudos for dogging out other black women. They really have not, not too much to gain by doing so. Now, I do think that there's an aspect of black men, you know, dogging out black women in the sense of like, trying to play her girl you see her hair you see her wig or whatever the case amongst each other and amongst other women you know what i'm saying and they're trying to gain clout or social capital true but i'm not talking about that here and dare i say gay black men have a deeper love admiration and respect for black women because you know you know i don't have to say it but you know black men tend to only protect black women that they deem desirable to them whereas black queer men i feel like will a protected black woman based on principle because of his admiration and love and respect for the black woman who raised him. I'm gonna reiterate here that I'm not condemning black men. I love y'all, okay? I love us for real. I'm speaking generally for the video's sake, but I'm well aware that there are some black men who show up to bat for us every time without um, without any issue, without the expectation of a sexual favor and, sex and being desirable. And you know, I love y'all for real. The ones that I know, the ones that I don't, the ones that who are in my life, my beautiful black man, you get what I'm saying? I don't want y'all to think that this is that cause it's not. I do think that we need to start having these tough conversations so we can do some self inventory and implementing things that can change that. Especially between black men and black men, regardless of sexual orientation and preferences, and definitely between black women and black men, despite how desirable you think she is if you're willing to protect her and go to bat for her or not. We need to feel safe around y'all and vice versa. Drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this topic. I won't judge, I, I promise you all. I just really feel like black gay men get a bad rap for being, you know, um, feminine and you know, all of these things. But typically they're the ones who will stand up and be like, no, you can't talk to her like that. Absolutely. And oftentimes they'll be the one to protect a black woman against a heterosexual black man. Let's talk about that team. Um, I know a lot of black men who are gay who will stand on principle more than a, a heterosexual man will, okay? And I really just think that it boils down to their love and appreciation for the black women who are in their lives, the black men who were in their lives who instilled certain values in them. And I just feel like, you know, the, the, the distance between the gay black man community and the black men community needs to be gapped because this is how we're keeping men on the DL, especially women too, but that's a whole nother conversation, that's a whole nother video. But honestly and truly, I think that black 
queer men in this most recent era have really gone to bat for black women, speaking on their integrity, about how people police black women's bodies and all of these things when heterosexual men are silent. Well, what did she do? Oh, she was sleeping with him? Oh, she was looking like this because we're filed there under the umbrella of Kevin Samuels instead of thinking of their own thoughts and how their future daughters can, you know, prosper from having some sort of protection by a black man. And that to me is very, very weird, okay? And I think that, you know, shout out to the ones who are there, the girls that get it, get it, the girls that don't, don't. Again, I'm not trying to be divisive. I just think that, um, yeah, what I said, period. Don't forget to like this video if you like this type of commentary, conversation, because I wanna try to implement more conversations on Thursdays, Thoughtful Thursdays is what I'm gonna coin it. Um, yeah, y'all let me know what you think. As always, I'm sending you much love and much light and I will see you in the next video. Peace.